What's more impressive? Big speakers, multiple components, you know, a room just full of stuff. Or this, a small soundbar and subwoofer system that fits almost anywhere. Time to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. There's no shame in the hair loss game, but just because father time may come for your mane doesn't mean that we have to take it lying down. While two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by their mid-30s, we can finally do something about it with Keeps. I know, because I did. Nearly two years ago, I was able to get the care I needed to treat my thinning hair without having to leave my home, visit a doctor, or even go to a pharmacy, thanks to Keeps' subscription-based service. And I'm happy with the results, and I know many of you have noticed too. And no, it isn't a wig or a hair transplant. This is all natural, baby. I found a plan that worked for me to reverse my thinning hair and even stimulate new hair growth, and I believe you can too. Hair loss stops with Keeps. Try it for yourself. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson or click the link in the description. That's keeps.com slash Andrew Robinson. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. And now back to it. The Magnify Mini AX from Polk Audio is the brand's newest compact Dolby Atmos and DTSX compatible soundbar system. In addition to Dolby Atmos and DTSX support, the AX adds additional features such as Apple AirPlay 2 and Spotify Connect, which make it a far more versatile system for music and movie playback compared to the original Mini. Clearly aimed at everyday consumers and not diehard audiophiles or home theater enthusiasts, this more lifestyle soundbar solution is a bit light on specs. The AX on its own is a 3.1 system. Inside, you're gonna find three two-inch mid-range drivers and two three-quarter inch tweeters. The dot one obviously represents the included downward firing subwoofer. You can add surrounds to the AX system by adding the Polk SR2 wireless speakers separately for an additional $200 for the pair, which will turn the 3.1 one system reviewed here into a 5.1 setup. Since we were not sent the additional speakers, this review is going to focus solely on the AX's 3.1 and virtual Atmos performance. And I have to say, the AX is a pretty sweet little solution. It's well built for such an affordable product. I wish the subwoofer had been wrapped in the same fabric as the bar for a more cohesive look, but that's just a minor complaint. The remote is nice, though once the bar is set up, I doubt you're ever going to use it over your TV's remote, or in our case, our Apple TV one. While the AX does have different sound settings, such as night, music, cinema, and 3D, I preferred 3D for all situations, whether listening to music or watching movies. Cinema is the most like 3D, only with a little less spaciousness, whereas music is decidedly mono, since the stereo speakers are not far enough apart to create a stereo image. So for best results, it is my recommendation that users just engage the 3D sound profile, turn the sub and dialogue up or down to taste, and enjoy the show. Borrowing from Arvin Alano. So Nobody asked, but running a quick sweep from 20 to 20 revealed a surprisingly linear response for a soundbar and a budget one at that in its 3D setting. And with the sub placed in our room where all subwoofers sound their best, the Polk is impressive, not ruler flat or neutral in its out of the box configuration, but there's little to get upset about. The subwoofer was solid down to 30 Hertz in our room and didn't possess a ton of bloat or boominess either. The mid range relies heavily on the sub and as a result does have a bit more weight to it than most bars, resulting in a full bodied sound that I think a lot of you are going to find agreeable. The highs roll off a bit, but do so in a way that keeps the Polk from sounding forward or shouty. But let's talk about the bass for a moment because the measurements show it can be very good, not to mention deep. But as we say on this channel, specs rarely, if ever, tell the whole story. In our room, subs sound best when placed to the side and slightly behind our sofa. Placed here, pretty much any sub, cheap or expensive, is going to sound and measure neutral and not boomy. However, this placement does not work for this system because the Polk relies more than a little bit on the sub for its mid-range. While bass frequencies may be more omnidirectional, mid-range frequencies are not. And I don't have to tell you how disorienting it is to hear a voice like mine coming from two very different points within a room. The sub is good, but to achieve the most coherence between the sub and the bar itself. 
I recommend that you place it close to or on the same general plane as the sound bar. This will ensure that you don't experience a giant sonic disconnect when listening to sounds that may fall in that crossover range. Once the sub and bar are working in harmony, the results are impressive. This is a full range sounding system with appreciable and palpable bass that is deep enough and explosive enough to bring films like Top Gun Maverick to life. Dialogue is clear and intelligible out of the box, but it can be improved, should you need it, by increasing the dialogue control. Christy liked the dialogue set to plus two as it made harder to understand aspects of shows like The Great easier to enjoy at all volumes. I really like what Polk has done with their dialogue enhancement system here, as it doesn't just take the high frequencies and pump them up, resulting in a tweeter-forward performance the way, well, some other bars do. It actually adjusts the mid-range and upper mid-range while while leaving the treble or high frequencies completely alone. I love that. Speaking of the treble, this is one of the least aggressive bars that I have heard in a while. It's not too dissimilar from the JBL we just reviewed. The Polk pairs well with a wide range of music and movies and will likely never drift into aggressive or fatiguing territory. Those of you who feel sound bars typically sound tinny, you owe it to yourself to demo the Polk because it may just get you to change your tune. Now the real question, can a small 3.1 system really recreate the theater experience? The Polk gets pretty darn close. In its 3D sound mode, it comes close to creating a near 180 degree experience with terrific vertical scale for such a small bar. The AX is way better and more immersive with television and movies than it is for music. I didn't really like it for music when seated in our sweet spot, though for background off axis listening, like from the kitchen, it's passable. But throw on a Dolby Atmos encoded film like Top Gun, turn the volume up just a little bit, and I think you're going to be impressed, maybe even a little bit blown away. Dynamics are good, though they do get better with some volume, so for those of you that need a slightly more dynamic but low-level bar, you may want to peep the JBL, even though the JBL lacks Atmos support. That said, in the face of giant dynamic swings, the Polk does appear to possess a limiter, whereby sudden loud noises are curbed to avoid damaging the speakers. The presence of the limiter isn't too distracting, nor is it as aggressive as what I've experienced from LG's latest soundbars. As for comparisons, when it comes to Atmos compatible soundbars, albeit ones that tackle Atmos virtually, the Polk Magnify Mini AX is hard to beat, especially at its current asking price, $449. At this price, the AX costs the same as the Sonos Beam Gen 2, which is our current reference, only the Polk comes with a sub, whereas the Sonos does not. And adding a sub to the Beam, which we still haven't done, brings the cost up to $1,138. I think the AX bests the beam sonically with its included sub. Now the Polk is not as sleek, nor does it not have the super sexy setup menus and room calibration. While I'm not about to ditch our Sonos Beam Gen 2, we did buy it after all, if I were on the market for a small soundbar solution like the Beam, I would definitely take a good long look at the Polk because in terms of performance, they are comparable, but with respect to value, the Polk wins. As for my reference budget soundbar, the JBL Bar 5.1. The JBL is better for music and is equally exciting for movies, but the Polk does a better job at creating a sense of three-dimensional space, and I am including better height. While neither bar has upward firing drivers, the Polk's virtual Atmos performance is a notch or two above what the JBL can do. Now, if you already purchased the JBL bar, don't fret or sell it. You still have a great bar, one that is a better all-rounder if you want to also listen to music. But if you're a home theater only fanatic, the Polk Magnify Mini AX is going to be worth your consideration. With respect to the LG Eclair, I wish I still had it so I could test it in our new space alongside the Polk. Going off memory, the LG was not as mid-range focused as the Polk. The LG definitely had a more treble forward sound in comparison, resulting in a more punchy, dynamic, and less neutral sound. Again, just going off memory. Spatially, the LG was very good, surprising even, and I love the industrial design of the LG compared to the Polk. All that said, I believe the Polk is the better, more balanced product. Compared to the original Magnify Mini, I say get the AX. I don't see the AX as an update to the Mini, but rather its own thing. The Mini is great, near ideal for enhancing television dialogue, but when it comes to recreating the theatrical experience, the Mini cannot touch the AX. Considering the two are very comparable in price and size, I would just get the AX and never look back. As for the newest Magnify products Polk just announced, well, we haven't heard them yet, but we have requested them 
and we hope to bring you answers soon. So to the question I posed in the intro, which is more impressive for home theater, a room full of gear or a simple football-sized bar and a subwoofer? I'm gonna say this much. If you point out all of your gear to your friends before ever hitting play, they'll no doubt be impressed. Or at least they're gonna to lie to you and say that they are. But blindfold your friends and turn on the polk and then tell them they're listening to all of those speakers and all of your gear. Some of them are gonna believe you. And to me, that's the most impressive thing. Is the polk as good as our reference theater setup? No. It's also not as good as more expensive sound bars like the Ambio or the Samsung, but for less than 500 bucks, the Polk is better than it has any right to be. So that's it. That is now my take on the Polk Magnify Mini AX. What do you think? I mean, I just can't get over how small this thing is. Yeah. It's a tiny little package. It's, it's, I know you compared it to a football. Yeah. It's any, any of my, uh, uh, lady friends out there watching, it's it's similar to like a small handbag or a clutch. Yeah. It's yeah. it's really tiny and and impressive. Yeah, uh, I think the overhead spatial quality was probably the most surprising aspect of this soundbar for me. Mm -hmm. Is it as good as having a whole system of speakers? No, no, it's not. But mm -hmm. it gets pretty close for something that's going to cost you less than five hundred bucks. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that is to I, I totally agree with the way you ended the review. I mean, that to me is the more impressive feat. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know if I was going into this review or looking at this product thinking, you know, I I should lower my expectations because I think sound bars, at least in 2022, they've come so far as like you you should have expectations because they can do amazing things. Well, I can tell you I definitely like it better than our Sonos Beam. Okay. But I think I would still take the JBL uh, Bar 5.1 mm -hmm. that we recently reviewed over this. Only because I felt like the JBL has better dialogue clarity for me. Hmm. Um, okay. And I also agree that I think music is better sounding on the JBL. Yeah. So yeah. if that's something that you really care about and you're not looking... You know, you're looking for something that is more than just like a passive listening device. Mm -hmm. Then I think that you'll be happier with the JBL um, in the long run. I could actually see some people preferring the first gen Polk Magnify Mini system. Okay. If they had the opportunity to demo both side by side like we have, mm -hmm. uh, especially if, you if you're if you like me and you struggle with dialogue clarity. Yeah. Um, I thought the intelligibility was a little bit better on the um, the older Magnify Mini system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and you kind of help explain that to me that it's because it's more directional. So at first it may seem like you are getting a bigger sound, but once you've listened to both, you're gonna realize that you there is a trade off there because you're gonna lose uh, some of the like overhead Spacious, spatial yeah. cues that you're gonna get with the, the new AX system. Mm -hmm. Um, but then again, like you are going to get better dialogue intelligibility, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. With the older older system. Yeah. I wish there was a way that we could just combine the two systems, but mm -hmm. you know that's uh, you know that's not reality. But uh, if you don't struggle with the you know things like dialogue uh, intelligibility, uh, then then there's no reason not to get the AX system. Hands down, I think the AX model is the nicer looking. Um, package. Mm -hmm. They really, uh, for once, you've got a brand that made significant improvements in that area mm -hmm. going from one generation to the next. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's significant. They yeah. are definitely, uh, the design team stepped it up, stepped it up. Yeah. Yeah. I stand by my critique that I would get the AX and then dial up, dial up the voice, dial back the bass. I think you're going to get pretty close to what the mini can do with respect to dialogue while getting all of the benefits of the new system. But if you're on a budget or you are just like, man, I just want the dialogue, then yeah, the mini at the lower price still makes sense. And are I understand they, why are they they're lower price. I it think, is. I it thought is. that you said that they were priced the same. They were, but as of this review and checking this morning, it turns out the mini is a little bit less expensive. Oh, okay. So, well, that does make more sense. Yeah, you know that they yeah. would discount the the older, older older model. Yeah, yeah, and and they're both on sale at the same time, so you kind of have to give people a reason to look at one thing over another, and vice versa. Otherwise, you confuse. Otherwise, you pull an NAD. 
and you confuse people. So any other thoughts on the Magnify Mini AX? No, no, I think it's super impressive. And I'm just, I continue to be impressed with just what the soundbar manufacturers are able to do and these small little packages. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's impressive. It's impressive. Well, that is it. That is now our review of the Polk Magnify Mini AX, very small soundbar and subwoofer system. What do you guys think? Question of the day, you can see this one coming from a mile away. What is more impressive, a room full of gear or a tiny little soundbar that can emulate a room full of gear? I really want to know. And please be honest. Don't, don't, don't take offense to this question because you may have a room full of gear. I have a room full of gear and I could still be impressed by a tiny little thing that sounds like a really big thing. I think the more interesting question might be though to ask would now that you've, especially if you're a fan of the channel mm -hmm. and you've, you've, you know, some of you might say suffered through the soundbar reviews that we do. <laughs> Are you at a point or are you starting to get to a point where you would consider yeah. even auditioning something like this, like the Polk, yeah. uh, to maybe put to rest some of your past feelings or experiences that you've had with Sound you know, bars. soundbars yeah. from, let's face it, probably a lot of you haven't even really looked at one in you know, five, five ten, ten, years. ten years. Yeah, yeah. Things, things do change, so maybe it's time to... <laughs> you know, give something another ch chance. So I'm curious if you would be, if you, if any of the reviews we've done here have made you more open to a soundbar potentially coming into your home. <laughs> Both good questions. See, she's getting good at this. Mine's better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Vote. I'm not. Vote but for which one of our questions <laughs> is better. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy so diligently leaves for all of you, know that that's a great way. You've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Speaking of thanks, thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this episode. Remember to get 50% off your first order. Go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson. Again, thank you, Keeps. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.